What is going on, everyone? It is Tyler McKinney back here again. And listen, we are going live, and I'm glad that you came in to join us. Hey, if you're watching, please let me know down in the comments where you're from and leave me a question. Um, and I'll try to get to that throughout the course of uh, this video. If you haven't yet, um, possibly consider subscribing. Uh, most of you guys have, and I appreciate all of the love that I get from you guys. Um, let me know if my mic's okay um, down there in the comment section. If you can, let me know, um, you know, how all uh, everything is doing in that with it. And like I said, let me know where you're from and... Um, and uh, I'd love, love to hear from you guys. Leave me comments. I'd love to interact with them. You know how it is. All right. So, um, all apologies uh, says uh, the Panthers have now cut Cam Newton. Do you think P.J. Walker stands a chance in the league and why? Yeah, I actually think P.J. Walker stands a really good chance. I can't remember, and I really wish. I, I want to give credit where credit's due. So, if you're watching this um, video and you were the one who left this comment, Please let me know down, and I will give you credit for um, for saying this. But Teddy Bridgewater has been plagued with injuries throughout his whole career. So if P.J. Walker right now is the only guy that um, I think that's just, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure it's just Teddy Bridgewater and P.J. Walker on on that squad. So if um, if PJ Walker can come in and impress, I mean, he legitimately could have a shot. Now he doesn't make. He's not going to make the kind of money that they are giving Teddy Bridgewater, and the type of money they're giving um, Bridgewater is starter money. And so I think they're planning on him starting. But he has been plagued with injuries. And like I said, if you're the one who left me that comment, um, or if you know who did, let me know down in the comment section, and I will definitely give them credit for that because I didn't come up with that one on my own. But that's true. He really, not only if he doesn't end up being the starter, he's got a real shot of um, not only making the team, but possibly seeing the field, especially if Bridgewater gets hurt. Hey, lo love to see you guys. Dalton, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, love to have you, man. And I will try to get to that um, that video here. I will, we'll see what happens. I don't know if I can, if I can do it live. Well, we'll see. Maybe I might break the stream. But hey, we'll try it here in a little bit. Um, hey, Lewis, no, no biggie, man. Um, I'm just glad that you're here. N no worries about being late. All apologies. St. Louis, dude, we got some St. Louis representing here. I'm loving it. Um, yeah, some uh, Midwest uh, uh, definitely uh, represent. Love it, guys. Uh, Dalton, Teddy Bridgewater isn't good, though. Uh, I'll take uh, PJ over him. Um, there is one other guy now that they got. Um, I thought Allen got traded. Um, could could be wrong, but I thought Allen's no longer on the team. You, somebody let me know. Um, a Paladin demo. Um, Springfield. Uh, solve the mystery. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. There's a bunch of different Springfields. Um, but glad to have you. All right. So right now we got six people on. Hopefully, let me know, guys. Um, is is does this sound pretty good? Uh, everything working all right? Hopefully. But yeah, continue to let me know where you where you guys are from. All right. Let Cam Newton go. Yeah. You know, the funny thing, Lewis, is is like, I don't know if it's just me, but is anybody else out there realizing or or maybe seeing that like this this quarterback like carousel in the NFL that just like all these guys are going to different teams and you know this guy's moving here this guy's moving here this guy's moving here and it's almost like it's starting to get to be like the NBA where where these guys are just bouncing from team to team to team now i know that in in the NFL these these teams are they are they are not really that loyal. There are a few guys, or a handful of guys, like you know, Tom Brady was a guy that that teams were loyal to. Um, you know, uh, those franchise quarterback guys, and and really those like freak athlete guys. Um, but really, outside of that, the NFL really is is a dog eat dog world, and um, it, it's really tough to sustain it in the league one you just don't have the years that you do playing other sports to play at the top level the other thing is that you know um 
it, it, the the teams, you know, they, they let you go fairly quickly. And so you're, you know, your shelf life in, in the NFL is, is, is not a lot, but it's interesting to see that you're starting. We're starting to see, especially among, you know, the, the bigger names starting to see guys, you know, moving around and see that carousel going on. All right, let's see what else we got going on here. Um, I'm curious if Tom Brady is going to change his number because Chris Godwin has 12 to, you know, I don't know. Um, he could, uh, it seems to be that that uh, Tom Brady's wanting to kind of just really change things. We got seven guys on. Come on, guys. Um, you know, we'll we'll wait and let a few other people get on here, and then maybe I'll go through and I'll uh, I'll hit up that video if I can. Oh, like I said, what the heck? We'll break the stream tonight with that. But I think that Brady might be, he, he's probably ready for like a change in something different. And so who knows? You might see him take a different number. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, you know, any of you guys that know Brady Ruel, has he ever had a different number than 12? Um, like, did he have something different in high school or junior high or something like that? Let me know down in the, down in the comment section. We'll keep that up. Um, did they get rid of Allen? Uh, okay, we already got that. Um, we have no social media in football. There's n no one arguing. I want rivalries between players, not between teams. That's dumb. Um, so, Lewis, you're you're wanting. Um, yeah, you know, I. <laughs> there, there is, there, there is the NFL, and we talked about this with the XFL, and that's why we love the XFL so much. Is that we, we got kind of some of that drama. Uh, that it was nice. It was fun. I enjoyed it. The drama on the field and that on, on Saturdays and Sundays that we got in the XFL, you don't get the drama on the in the NFL. The NFL is very, very particular about the uh, way that they do things. Hey, we got, we got eight guys on now. Great, great job guys. Keep, keep adding to it. Um, but you know, the NFL, they're, they're, if, if you noticed, um, you know, they're, they're very close knit. They, they, they try to keep, Everything you know, very very close, and, and that I'm, and and you know, very hush hush. You know, don't let you see behind the scenes too much what's going on. And I think that that's that really has actually the past couple of years, especially with the way that our our whole society is changing to where people are much more open to sharing their lives and really people are connecting over distances because because of social media and sharing their lives that the NFL is starting to look archaic because of you know everything stands behind the shield you know and and um and you know we've got to hold up the brand and, and all of that and and so I think that they're starting to get a little bit of backlash for that and that they're going to need to open up and have a little bit more personality and show the personalities not just like you know in NFL films twenty years later you know we we get the behind the scenes story of you know you know how much of a maverick somebody was or what somebody did that was you know you know kind of buried down. The other thing is it's a lot harder to do that. So when you try to, and so in today's day and age, what happens is, is when you try to go through and, you know, you try to, you know, you know, kind of hide things and do that. What happens is a lot of times the stuff leaks anyways because there's cameras everywhere. There's stuff going on. And so people are okay with you coming out. Like it's a different world. If you just kind of come up and say, like, people know that, listen, you got to try things, you got to work with things, and you got to do that, and, and so if there's a little bit of, you know, tension and things here, people understand that nowadays, whereas, you know, before, you know, that that was big hush-hush to where when they're trying to keep things hush-hush, and then they, and, and, you know, they kind of like, then things come out, whether it be through social media or some reporters reporting something, and they're like, oh, no, that doesn't happen, and this and that, but you see, you know, you see evidence of it through the social media and through the reporting, it really makes you then start to wonder what else are they hiding? And so it makes it even twice as bad as what it really is. And so the NFL needs to clean up some of that. And, and listen, the ref, the, you know, the refs, the way that they've been and the way that they've, they've handled it has just been terrible. And that's one perfect example of just kind of all what I've been explaining. Let's get back here. Um, what else we got going on? I'm sorry to say this. I hate Tom Brady. I like uh, Winston more. Hey, you know what? 
you know, Lewis, you're you're entitled to your opinion. You know, I didn't think that Winston was all that bad. I think he just needs to really make some better decisions when uh, letting the ball fly. And if he, it's kind of like Cardell. He just needed to make some better decisions, and I think it'll be all right. Um, let's see here. All apologies. The Rams have uh, put themselves in a hole. Um, our budget has run dry, and we haven't had a first round draft pick in about three years. We also had let uh, Gurley go because of budget cuts. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I. I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, they could turn some things around, um, you know, there for the Rams. One, those those logos are god-awful. I don't know. Um, all apologies. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of the, um, the logos. The logos are just terrible. And if they're trying to do that to, you know, bolster something, that ain't working. Um, you know, I, I think Gurley hasn't really been what he was before the injury, but that injury takes a long time to recover from to where you might actually this year would probably be the year. The problem is, is you're right. You know, they really need to fix that, fix their their salary cap and really need to fix that stuff with that team. And until they get that stuff fixed, you know, it's going to be, you know, tough sledding for them there. And, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, we will see what happens. Uh, you know, I, it's too early to say if the window closed for them, you know, a couple years ago. Um, uh, but I'm, it's kind of more and more looking that way. I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts. Explains the new logo. Yeah, yeah, definitely explains the new logo. Um, Paladin, good night. Like, yeah, their budget has really been cut, so they had to go, like, you know, on a low budget um, you know, type of a scenario, definitely. Um, I still don't mind a Ta'amu is, uh, still in, in state. Yeah. I, you know, um, I, I think that him going to the Super Bowl champs was, it was okay. I think it was nice to see him, him, you know, go somewhere in that. I just want to see him play. Um, he's, he's too good of a talent just to sit on the bench. I mean, this guy, um, he has the smarts, he has the ability, and he has the throwing capacity. He has really the total package that you want and that the NFL wants, and I think that he could really, truly be a nice starter in the NFL. Remember, guys, he, this is his, he just came off being a rookie. So this is his second year. Uh, you know, I mean, it, you look at that. The XFL was his rookie season. For a rookie to play like that, that's huge. Especially, not only him, but, you know, kudos and hats off to uh, Corn Dog. Uh, you know, Taylor Cornelius, another rookie. You know, XFL had a really nice rookie class. Really was a one-season wonder. He has been injured on and off for the past three years and hasn't been consistent. I, I totally agree with you. Um, and I think after this, you know, I, I think he's a, he's an okay piece. He's just not that expensive of a piece to have, right? I, I think that the, the cost for uh, to have him... Um, as opposed to the benefits that he brings nowadays, you know, really isn't there. And that just goes to show you, again, like what I was saying, you know, your shelf life in the NFL is very, very short. Um, and, and, and as soon as, you know, a team doesn't really, you know, need you or want you anymore, you know, that's what's going to happen. Oh, come on, guys. We've got seven guys on here now. Let's get some, let's get some guys in here. Um, it's still a little early, though. Usually we pick up stride around... You know, I don't know, a little after ten o'clock. Let's see here. I wish he could get more of a, a more of a shot. Mahomes could uh, be the goat, greatest. Uh, yeah, Ta, uh, Taamu fan, uh, but he can't pass Mahomes. Mahomes, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They. I mean, you know that. That's just it. Um, Mahomes is the is is the real deal there, and unfortunately, he has to be there with him. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Tyler, way to have you here, man. Glad to have you. Another Tyler here. Always, you know, always could use more of us. Says Jaguars uh, could use a good quarterback. I like Minshew, but he's still raw. I think Minshew's going to be really good for you guys. I think now that they've got the system tailored towards him, and that I, you know, I was been watching film, um, you know, on him. And uh, really, it was kind of, uh, you know, I was kind of going through and and really looking at. Uh, what Chicago's getting with with Nick Foles, and I think Foles is going to fit in Chicago's system much better than what he did um, there in um, 
Jacksonville, and I think Minshew's just built for Jacksonville. I, I think that they're gonna they're gonna do really well. I think now that this is actually his team, and and they built the offense around him, I think that they just kind of had to scramble with him to figure out you know exactly what all he is in that. And I think that he's definitely a wild card. I mean, he yeah, he's he last year was a little raw, but I think now that he is the guy tailoring things towards him, I think that that rawness is gonna wear off. And um, and again, he was a rookie last year. And as a second year guy, and a lot of times, you know, really the second year is the make or break year for a lot of guys because a lot of guys don't get another opportunity after that. And so you either have, you know, the sophomore slump, which is what a lot of people talk about, or they just continue on and get better and get good. And I think Minshew's going to be better and be good. I, you know, I like I like how he is. Listen, any any man that can go ahead and pull off um, a uh, – you know, a mustache like that without looking hipster and like they're trying too hard. I mean, he just wears it really well. I mean, he just, um, you know, and, and to have the swagger like that, I think he'll do just fine. <laughs> Granted, that has nothing to do with his football ability, but I think that he'll be just fine. I don't necessarily think that you guys need another quarterback. All right, all apologies. What you got going on here? Um, I see. I think that the teams are overlooking Jameis Winston because he can fix his interception problem over time. Once he fixes that, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Uh, I, I think that he, that he looks really good. He need, just needs to fix it. Um, I think Steve Young said the other day, like, I would love to take on Jameis Winston. He said I could fix him, um, you know, and that. And I think that some team will. Um, and, and I think what they're trying to do is – we're at this weird period right now where a lot of a lot of the big names teams are trying to pick up and trying to get and solidify but a lot of the the I don't knows and what are we going to kind of do and trying to see how chips are going to fall you know they're really trying to figure that out and and right now you know Jameis Winston is kind of one of those pieces that can wait for a lot of teams um you know because of Tom Brady coming in they know that he's going to be out the door and they're going to try to get something for him so teams are just trying to you know uh trying to figure out exactly what they can do to where I think he'll end up somewhere, and I think that he'll end up somewhere starting. I mean, when you throw a ball like he throws the ball and play the way he does, I mean, you know, the, the, guy, the guy's legit. He needs to figure out his, his interceptions, but, but, but outside of that, I, you know, I think he'll be all right. Um, okay, so what is the, the LAME logo? I, I don't know. You'll have to explain that for me, Dalton. Um, let's see here. It's hard to fix bad decision making. Yeah, but, um, you know, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like growing up and, you know, Jameis Winston just kind of needs to grow up a little bit. I, I know that that sounds cliche and listen, we got, we got six guys here. Um, you know, come on guys, let's, uh, um, let's get on here and, uh, let's have some conversations with one another, but to get back to what you're saying, you know, that it's hard to fix. I get it, Tyler. It's hard to fix, um, uh, you know, decision-making, but sometimes, you know, as you get a little older, um, and granted I'm not old at all, but you, you learn from your mistakes and you learn that, you know, it's best just to maybe throw the ball away, live to for another down, or hold, you know, or pull the ball down and 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 run. You don't have to get the home run. And so as as I look at it, you know, I, I do think that he can fix that and and do that. Uh, you know, I don't think that necessarily it's just it's just a thing of like bad, bad decision making. Like I said, I've been watching some film. I watched some film on him too, and I and I think that it's really just you know, him slinging the ball when he knows that he, he shouldn't. And the other thing is, is when you got, when you got studs like receiving wise, like they do, I mean, when you got a guy like Evans and you can just throw the ball up and know that most of the time he's going to get it, sometimes you're just going to heave the ball. And so that's partly a product of, of just kind of, you know, the weapons that he's had there. So take that for what it's worth. Um, Let's see here. I think that teams are overlooking. Yep. All right. Lo um, let's see here. Dolphins were, n were not a joke no more. They are Super Bowl contenders in in the coach's mind. Um, yeah. So, Lewis, what do you what are you thinking there with the Dolphins? You liking them? Um, you know, things 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 change. Yeah, they do. Um, it's a pun, lame. <laughs> 
you know, I, I don't know. Um, I do know that the situation, sometimes just changing situations and and in a different area can take a guy from looking like a really bad quarterback to being, you know, a really good quarterback. And there's tons of examples of that over time and that with it. Man, glad to have you guys here, though. Um, let's see, what else we got going on? All right, so... Dalton, you had this video, and I'm gonna I'm gonna break break the live stream, and we'll see what happens here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. Hold on here, and this one is Doug unplugged. Battle Hawks giving fans a reason to show their hatred towards Stan. Kuroki. Now, Stan Kuroki. And again, hey guys, I'm terrible with names. So we've got um, we've got Dan unplugged, and I don't know. Let me know down in the comments who that is. Who's who's Stan? So I can have a little bit of a better idea. Um, the defense has gotten better, but their offense is still horrible. Um, yeah, what what do you think of the Dolphins need? Let me know in the in the comment section. All right, Dalton, um, do you know who that guy is, who that Stan guy is? Somebody let me know who Stan is. So, um, anybody know who that is before I hit play on that video? Okay, so if you go to the beginning of the chat, what I'm going to do right now is is that uh, Dalton Ferris put in there, he has a, um, he wants to get my reaction to this uh, this YouTube video, and if you want to go there and you want to watch it with me, and go ahead and do that with me, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stand as the Rams. Okay, that makes sense now. Moving from St. Louis to LA, got it, thanks. Okay, um, all right, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to start this. So if you want to watch the video with me, I'll, I'm going to tell you when I hit play, and then you can follow along as I react to this video. All right, so I am on the video. This video is a minute and 47 seconds long, and we are starting right now. All right, so we're watching here. All right, so this is a... Um, this is a like a like a like a TV news broadcast thing, and they're kind of telling what they're um, thinking about it. <laughs> All right. Woo. All right. So. Ooh, there's our battle ox. All right. <laughs> yes, he does. Oh, that's lovely. He hate Kronky. That's cool. And then, of course, the seltzer. That's awesome. Budweiser with that. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is I, I I love this. If you watch, these guys are busting tables. It is, <laughs> this one guy got his rear end on fire. Oh wow! I don't know this. This might be as uh, you know. I I don't know. I, Browns fans still might have it when when Art Modell left, but for the XFL to have this, this is fantastic. We got guys with ESPN things on. Got another guy busting a table, and I think they had their pinata. So Doug un unplugged. Uh, listen, that was hilarious. Um, you Battlehawk fans, dude, you know, caw -caw, you guys love your Battlehawks. And we got seven guys on here. Let's get some more on here. Come on, guys. Now, granted, it's still early. It's 9, 9.54, and we usually hang out here. I don't know. Hopefully you liked it. If not, no. Dude, those you guys in St. Louis are wild. And um, you guys are wild fans. And, yeah, maybe it was a good thing that the Rams left. When they left, it seemed like, yeah, it looked like your city got better. You guys got a lot more. And, um, 
And listen, you got a winning team as opposed to uh, what the Rams have. Um, yeah, Tyler, sorry. Uh, um, I think you were the you're the Rams fan, right? So yeah, t- sorry, Tyler. Sight. Um, LA Wildcats moving to Oakland. Imagine the hype. You know, I don't know. Um, you know, they were we we've been talking about this. I really think that the XFL wants to be in those big markets. They really want to be in LA. They really want to be in 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 New York because. The, even though like the regional teams are great and they're going to bring in a lot of people, a lot of times you got guys, you know, people who are across the nation who are New York fans because a lot of people are, you know, you know, they've got some ties to New York or some ties to LA. And so I think the XFL likes to be in those markets. Now, whether or not they'll move out of them, I don't know. Oakland's not a bad spot. If they're, if there's the thing is it, there's a difference between the, like the Midwest and being somebody from the Midwest, I know this. Like, you spite me, like I'm done with you. And 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 then I'm gonna be rooting for, you know, the guy to take you down and whoever that is. Like, you know, uh, you know, that's who I'm gonna be rooting for. And and so it kind of makes sense in the Midwest. LA is, you know, and, and West Coast is is a, li- a little bit more laid back than that. And so you don't you don't get that out in, in 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 LA and you know out west. Now Oakland Oakland's a little bit different area than that. So I get I get that. I you know I, I do know that there are a lot of diehard you know um, Raiders fans there that are, that are pretty ticked off that they they left for Vegas to where I think that they could do well in the area. For me, it is a bit of a toss up. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about about that. Uh, filled with okay. Um, but Oakland, not a bad decision though. I, I I don't I don't necessarily think that it's bad. I just don't know if they're ready to give up on LA yet, and that's the question um, to me is whether or not they're ready to give up. You had a a liquor pinata. Okay, uh, I am a Rams fan too. <laughs> so you're sticking with the Rams? Like what's going on, man? Um, you gotta let me know. Um, it was a croaky pinata. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I knew that. I don't know. Hopefully you liked, I didn't have much of a reaction. Um, you know, I'm trying to figure all of the stuff out. I might not be the best guy for this stuff. Who knows? Let me know. Uh, let's see here. All right. Yeah, Dalton, let me know what you th- think of that. And, um, you know, after seeing that, Paladin, you might not want me to be doing any other uh, any other, uh, any other, other reaction videos with that. But, you know, I don't know. We'll see what it is. All Texan fans are moving to Roughnecks. They don't want a bad coach. Um, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I think the Roughnecks, um, hopefully we'll see what happens there. You know, I don't know. I don't know if, you know, it th- looks like June Jones is, is there for the, the long haul. And I'm kind of curious. So, like, they had Connor Cook. And Connor Cook, if you remember, was the talk of of the um, training camp, mini camp, all that type of stuff. And, and a lot of it had to do because all we could see was what was happening in practice. And you really couldn't see the elusiveness just and and just, you know, how P.J. Walker could ball out. And then once they got on the field, we all forgot about Connor Cook. And I think Connor Cook could have probably started for half of the teams in the league. I know the Vipers could have easily used him. I know Seattle could have used him. Um, I know Dallas uh, with with Landry Jones down, they could have used him. And, um, you know, I mean, like I said, in New York, another team that could have used used him and that. Uh, so, I, you know, I'm. I, I think that he could be a really nice piece for them, and and I think that he could really really kind of step into that role in Houston. But the thing is, is, is how is the XFL? And I'm curious to see this. Um, and and you know, I think that there's a, really a lot of neat things that are that we're kind of seeing here with the um, the XFL and. Um, you know, how are they, are they going to re-sign guys? How are they going to do that? 
are they going to bring guys back? Are all the guys going to be on, like, if they were on a team, are they going to go back to that team? You know, how are they going to do that? Are, are they going to have a draft? How are they going to do the draft? Are, are the guys who were on teams, they get re-signed, they're going to be back on the teams they were on? And, and how are they going to, you know, even all that out? Are they going to try to create parity in the league again? Or are they going to, you know, go ahead and just leave teams as they were and like I said again just kind of build build upon what they've done already in the past I'm really curious to see if they do expand it looks like that they're going to expand um you know all, all kind of indications are showing that they're probably going to bring in two teams um and I think that there's enough talent out there if everybody continues to support the XFL show their support for the XFL I think that it'll be really interesting to see what to see what happens and transpires. I think that you're going to start to see some deals and XFL starting to bring in some money. And if they can start to pay some guys some money, I think that you're going to start to see um, some differences here. I don't know. Um, let me know down in the comment section if you guys caught that uh, the pro football talk, the um, article that they did. Um, about PJ Walker getting the $150,000 signing bonus. I thought it was uh, pretty funny. They, they took another jab at the XFL. Let me know if you guys saw that. All right, so um, what, what else we got going on? All um, um, it, was a, it was a great reaction. Oh, well, good. Hey, um, at least I can do something right. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Lewis, I'm, I'm a Lions fan. Our, um, I'm a Lions fan. Fans are decent, but... Can we get a Barry Sanders again? Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's kind of interesting. Every, like, I don't know what it is with Detroit. Every every now and again, like Detroit is just seller, and then and then they have a couple seasons here or there where the, where they're good, and and then they go back down to the seller, and it just seems like like they get a guy, whether it be a Barry Sanders, or um, you know Megatron, you know they have like a once in you know, like in a decade kind of a guy that they'll get and then it's weird they just like like both Megatron and Barry Sanders were at the height of their careers and they just left you know if if, if that ownership could ever figure things out and really get it together they, Detroit has a really good fan base and Detroit loves their football and I think that Detroit would be a great place for the XFL because I think that that again the people in that area, and you would get they would I think they would get fans from Ohio and they would get fans um, from from Indiana that would come to watch uh, Detroit football, especially if they can put uh, you know good stuff there in the XFL. And I think Ford Field would be a really good place for it. I know that you know starting out that would probably be a larger venue for them, um, but with the way that it is indoor and and that it is in there, I think that they could just use the lower section and I think that it would be a rock in place um, in that with it. So definitely, yeah, I don't understand the, I've never understood the Lions. And being where I have where I live in, in Ohio, um, I've always had, so, you know, for, for Sunday, you know, you, for Sunday football, it was always, you're either, you've either got the Browns on one station, which the Browns were terrible, have been terrible for most of my adult life, um, or you have the Lions, who have been terrible for most of my adult life. And so I've seen a lot of really bad football, NFL football. So these guys that are out here dogging on the XFL, you know, you obviously have not been switching between the channels and go from one bad football game with the Browns to the next bad football game with the Lions. The only saving grace is, is that I'm a second-generation Dallas Cowboys fan to where America's team usually if the Lions weren't playing usually I got to watch the Cowboys um, and usually the Lions were the early game because they didn't really draw a whole lot of audience and usually the Cowboys were the later game so I've so I've been a lot of times you know I'm usually able to watch the Cowboys on TV so it has been kind of nice but unfortunately the opposite game is usually has been usually like a Lions game or something like that. Um, so yeah, I feel for you, Lewis. Um, let's see your Tyler Swipe. Um, swipe. Uh, Re Redskins have been making off-season moves, like uh, Bruce Allen is going to make um, a WWE surprise turn, uh, return to the franchise. Um, yeah, I th I think that that's I think that that's 
that's where he went. If somebody was asking me about um about you know saying something about Allen, and I think that that's where he went. Oh, let's see here. Bring um Kareem Cato uh, into the league. Kelly Bryant and um, DeAndre Francois should be coming to so there are mobile quarterbacks to go around that won't make it in the NFL. That's interesting. Kelly Bryant, you know, I I, I think the Kelly Bryant ex, you know, experiment there in Missouri um, misery uh, did, didn't go very well. Um, I think it was more misery than than it was um, you know, uh, really a good situation and that they just didn't really have the pieces really there behind him and them to compete. And he really had to try to do some things and that, but he could be one of those guys. I totally agree with you. He could be one of those guys that they could pick up. That's a good, good call. I don't know about Francois. I've never been a huge fan of, of him from, from watching him. Never, never thought that. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. All right, guys, let's go ahead and I'll tell you what. Leave me a comment and I'll even put this down in the comment section because I know I'm terrible at pronouncing names. If you guys want to give me some names that you would like me to pronounce because you just want to laugh at me, I'm totally okay with that. So let me go ahead and, um, and do that here real quick. All right, so there we go. Um, you know, now that we're kind of like churning towards like guys that could be in the um, in the XFL and and picking up and that, let me know down in the comment section what you guys who you guys are are thinking. I think that you I think people have given some really good ones. Um, dude, what are we losing? Uh, okay, uh, let's see here. Rosalina Stalin. Maybe I got that one. I don't know. I'll have to dig out my. Uh, let's see here. Necromatic roster. Yeah, man. Yeah. Go, go, go right ahead. <laughs> I told you, listen, I am, I am not, um, a very fluent speaker and you guys know that, but hopefully my, um, analysis on things make up for it. How's everybody doing though right now with the lack of sports? And I think that this is really interesting and I've got kind of a different take on things than, than everybody else does. But as I've been looking at this and as as this kind of everything that's happening in in the world and, and all that's going on and as things get pushed, hey, yeah, you did it. I did it. I got one. I just for some reason I can't do Samoan names. I, I don't know. I just fumble over it and I make people mad. And even though I apologize for it all of the time. Yeah. Xavier uh, um, Killiams. I would try that one. What? So anyways, going back to like, you know, if you take the climate of everything that's going on here, if you ask me, I don't like I think I think we will get businesses back up and running in, in the United States. I, I think that, you know, our like our infrastructure and everything like that, I think that we'll we'll be getting things moving again. But I don't think you're going to be seeing large sporting events. I don't think you're going to be seeing um you know, concerts. I don't think you're going to be seeing a lot of that stuff that's going to be happening like it has. Come on, guys. We need to get people out here. We've got five of us on here, which I love talking with you five people. Um, but let's uh, let's make this thing a party. I know everybody's at home, so why don't you call up your friends and let them know here? I mean, shoot, I try to call up mine, and obviously you can see what's happening. We keep losing people. Um All right, Dalton, I'm going to try this one. Um, hold on, let me find it again. All right, so Pittsburgh Pirate. Jung Ho uh, Kang. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. I got uh, Blood Bowl hours upon hours, <laughs> lifetimes of coverage. Uh, dude, man. Like, yeah, that was really interesting. And, and what I'll do is I'll like, 
I'll try. I'll try to sit down and watch another video. Do it. Um, name Alvin Sign. Maybe. Scene. Sai. Uh, um, uh, then can I get a shout out? Lewis. Um, yeah, man. Uh, you know how you know how I roll. I usually try to hit up people. You guys, uh, you guys are good to me, so I definitely try to hit you guys up. Dude, we're down to four guys now. Eh, what the heck? Just us, you know, four kind of uh, dudes hanging out here. Um, let's see here. My legendary zombie lineman, Marcus Greaves. Maybe, maybe I got that one. I don't know. Um, but anyways, you know, looking at this thing, I don't think sporting events, and we might not get sports for the rest of the year. Sports might get canceled, and and you know, as all of this, it, all of this like free agency and stuff for the NFL might be all for naught. I I don't know if we're gonna listen. I don't think we're getting baseball at all this year. I think baseball is just gonna be canceled. I think the NBA is gonna be done. And I know we're only in March. I, I know that. But just as this stuff is progressing and as we're seeing thing, things happen, I don't think that there, that we're going to be doing these large gatherings of things. And I don't necessarily think that we're going to get to that. Now, I know companies are losing millions and millions of dollars, and these, they're playing, paying these players with these contracts and with this stuff. I think that it's interesting. Sorry, phone fell asleep. <laughs> Dude, man, you're good. You're good. Um. I'm just glad you're here. You, you know I'm joking. Two for two. For two. Hey, listen. I'll, I'll take that all day long. You were close, but for some reason, the pronunciation, gung. Okay. Hey. I'll, I'll take that, though. Hey. Um, I got a couple of them. That's pretty good. But as I look at this, this really, I think, really sets up a really nice opportunity because... If the landscape that we have here in sports really lends to where we're not really going to get, we might not get any, I mean, seriously, we might not get any football for the rest of the year. We might, they might cancel like next fall's football to where the, the next thing that we would have would be the XFL come February. That would be like, just think about that. People are hungry for football. <laughs> And the XFL is is what's there for people to watch. Good night. Who would have thought that, huh? And that all of a sudden, everything that's been going on leads up to that the only football people are getting are the XFL. That would be crazy. Let me know your guys' thoughts down there with that one. I, I'm curious to see what you think of that. I think you should do XFL and NFL commentary on things that happen during the week so you have uh, content to give out. Don't like one more than the other so they don't know that you um you just give the facts um another one of my zombie linemen to pronounce uh lascal mccoy let's see here uh lewis let me let me read this again let's see here uh, let's see here. Um, I think you should do XFL and NFL commentary on things that happened during the week. So you have content to give out. Don't like one more than the other so they know that you just you just giving the facts. Yeah, you know, I, it is interesting. There have been some, you know, some people and some guys. Hey, we're back up to five. Glad to have you guys back. Um but, you know, it is funny. Like, there are some guys out there that are just XFL guys. And when I did that did that Brady video the other day, like, you know, people were jumping on me about, like, you know, like, you're, you know, you're an XFL guy. Why are you jumping ship? And just because they're not here anymore, are you not doing content anymore? Listen, I just wanted to do another video. And, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure I was an NFL fan and been following the NFL a whole heck of a lot longer than the XFL. And if you paid attention to my channel and that I did, I've done a lot of XFL stuff, but, but I did a lot more college football things before I did, um, the XFL stuff. Now, granted, I haven't been, you know, doing this for very long, which I know that, I mean, I've only been doing it for, I don't know what, since, since the end of August. So September, October, November, December, January, February, March. So, you know, I'm, I've been doing it for seven months. I get it. 
Um, but yeah, I've been following football pretty much my whole life and, and that with it. So yeah, it is, it is kind of funny with that. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know what kind of commentary are you looking for? Like you, like things are happening during the week. So like you wanting me to like, like take like what I was doing or have been doing with the XFL and, and translate that and do kind of like my reactions and, and doing my commentary on what I think of, um, you know, all of these signings and these players going to different places, you know, whether it be Todd Gurley getting, um, getting cut or, um, you know, stuff like, uh, like Tom Brady or whether it be the, you know, the Nick Foles and him and Mitch, Mitch Trubisky and what's going to happen there. I think Foles will be the starter. I think they're going to let uh, Trubisky go. Um, I think that there's just too much pressure there. And I think, unfortunately, he's, you know, his, he's kind of last season was his, um, you know, you need either crap or get, you know, get off the pot. And, um, you know, uh, he didn't give them enough. And so they're, they're making him leave. I think that that's probably what's going to happen. Um, yes, 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 yes. Well, good. I'm glad I hit on some of this stuff. Um, and yeah, I definitely do. Um, at least not yet. If push comes to shove for WrestleMania, no fans. Did Vince McMahon ever decide to cancel WrestleMania? Um, I don't, he hasn't, but there won't be any fans. And I think they're doing it from the performance center. And I don't know exactly what all's going on. I think I heard the rumor that that's even going to be possibly free. Now, I don't know if that's with a free membership to the WWE network, meaning you got to sign up for it. You get your first month free. Or if they're just saying that WrestleMania, let me know. Um, I want you to clown these M NBC sports XFL haters. Mr. Saul, um, I play at a bar and knows tomorrow's lotto number. Yeah, dude. Okay, so I totally got off, and I will get um, – we'll, we'll get back to some more stuff. But, yeah, did you see that article? So, yeah, an article came out today, and you guys let me know if you saw this. But, like, pro uh, – XFL – so the pro football talk, those – they wrote an article, and they cannot help themselves but, like, bash – the um the XFL and um it, it it's really interesting. Let me bring up the article. So it was all about PJ Walker getting we it came out that he got a hundred and fifty thousand dollar signing bonus. Now, if you take what uh Garrett Gilbert got, which was a seventy five um a seventy five thousand dollar uh, signing bonus when he signed with the Browns. And remember, he was the Apollos quarterback. He played it. He he was the best quarterback in the league. He did a fantastic job in the AAF. Um, hold on here for football talk. Um, okay. Yeah, so this article, oh my gosh. And I don't want to like... <sighs> I don't really want to give them the publicity with this stuff, but good night, guys. Come on, quit trolling the XFL. But anyways, PJ Walker got a hundred and fifty thousand dollar signing bonus, which was twice as much as what Gilbert got. So that just shows you how much Carolina really wants him, and I think that they they've got a they've got a roster spot for this guy. I mean, that's just what it is. PJ Walker is going to be on the roster. That's what it is. If he's getting a hundred fifty a hundred fifty thousand dollar signing bonus, then he's probably getting more than that. Um, roughly a um, a mil and a half two year contract that um, Garrett Gilbert got, and so I would imagine he's probably he probably got himself a two million dollar um, nice little contract, maybe a two year two million dollar contract, or maybe somewhere around three um, three years three mil, maybe backloaded, you know, something like that. You know, I don't know. I don't know, and, and and if you're looking at guaranteed money, there's probably not a whole lot of guaranteed money on it. Um, obviously, the signing bonus he got 150, you know, thousand dollars. Probably, you know, his his whole contract's probably actually worth somewhere around five hundred thousand dollars. That's probably what it'll be when it comes out. I don't necessarily think that. So <laughs> you gotta love it. You gotta love it. So this is their article, okay? Um, playing well in the XFL paid off for PJ Walker. Walker, the quarterback who started for the Houston Roughnecks before the XFL season was canceled, got a hundred and fifty thousand dollars signing bonus when he joined the Panthers this week, according to um, Tom uh, plus uh, Tom. Uh, 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 Polisario, um, Tom Polisario of the NFL Network. 
That's a very good signing bonus for a player who wasn't even on an NFL practice squad when the XFL came calling in October. First dig. Um, suffice to say, without his solid play in the XFL, he wouldn't have been able to command that kind of a signing bonus. Based on published XFL salaries, based upon pub- sorry, let me let me change my voice here. Let me let me let me get in the right posture and um, get ready to to do this. Based upon XFL salaries, uh, based upon published XFL salaries, uh, Walker likely made a total of uh, four to six thousand five hundred seventy-five dollars for his time in the XFL. All players received a base salary of twenty-seven thousand dollars, and Walker would have received another eight thousand four hundred twenty-five dollars playing playing bonuses for playing in five games, and then another $11,110 for winning all five games. Um, And then in Carolina, Walker will be reunited with Matt Rule, his head coach in Temple. Rule might have offered Walker a spot on the Panthers' off-season roster even without his XFL performance. The second dig, well, actually, that's the... that's that's the third dig, but we'll get back into this pair, the other paragraph where we had our nose stuck in the air because obviously they did not pay attention to what they are doing or reporting, and it just goes to show you how lazy journalists are these days. Um, and we'll get back more into that. Let's finish this article so we can get rid of this thing. Uh, but Walker wouldn't have been able to command a signing bonus without the XFL because he wouldn't have had other teams bidding for his services. Okay, so they give a little bit of credit to the XFL there. Walker's contract will be a good advertisement for the XFL when it tries to convince when it tries to convince players to join the league for 2021 season. Again, another dig when it tries to convince players <sighs> listen like you are you are that like the ex-girlfriend that still wants the boyfriend back and like you like you know I I, I can't help it like it's terrible like you know you can't help it that the guy doesn't want you you don't have to like go trolling like like let him go off and live his dream you don't have to Like, yeah, the XFL, you know, you you guys failed the first time around. They didn't pick you up this time. You know, sorry about your luck. Unfortunately, it's like 20 years later and you have 20 years worth of wear and tear on you. And, you know, they've somebody else is in that space now. And and that's what it is. But getting back to this thing with P.J. Walker. And like I said, it's lazy reporting. And you know what? We'll just go out and say it. Michael David Smith, which that's a really generic name, um, but pay a little attention to what you're doing. He was a he was a tier one quarterback. We know that the tier one quarterbacks got more money than the base players, so he would have made more money than forty six thousand five hundred and seventy six thousand dollars. Would he make? Would he have made anywhere near probably the contract that he's going to have with Carolina? Probably not. But he would have probably made more money than the hundred fifty thousand dollars signing bonus when they signed him in there. When they brought him in there, he was a tier one quarterback. Now I know that salaries and things changed, and things looked a little different once everything came out, and things look a li- looked a little inflated when they gave us all the tiers and we ended up not having that kind of buffer, you know, tier level. But I would, I would imagine he probably still got somewhere around 200, $250,000. We don't know how much he got, but anyways, with that, I'm just saying, you know, that you, you have to report things properly. And, and when, when you're wrong, you need to come out and say that you're wrong. And, and being as lazy as what they've been with the XFL, that's what's going to happen. And if you're going to keep reporting like that, that's what you're going to get. All right, so I totally lost all this stuff. Okay, so I did good with uh, um, uh, Lascaux McCoy. Hey, so with with Paladin, I think I'm three for three with you. Got it, three for three. Okay, good. Um, let's see here. I want, uh, let's see here, fantasy football 
Football's over. Nothing, nothing, nothing to keep me sane. Oh, man. Yeah. I, you know, I talked about that, Lewis. And, you know, I don't know. Let me know right now what you're doing to keep sane. Guys, let me know down in the comment section so we can give Lewis some some stuff um, that he can he can go through and, um, you know, maybe he can he can pick up on. I don't know. Some shows he can watch, some games he can play. Um, I don't know if you've done this, but and. You know, I've I set up and I've been playing um, 2K5 back again, and like I simulated like six seasons through, and just to where I could get all the players out of there. And so I'm playing with like no name guys. If you want me to stream that stuff, let me know, um, and I'll like start a fresh season over, and you know we can kind of go through do that and have fun with that. Um, but yeah, um, you know I don't know. Let, let's give let's give Lewis some some. Uh, you know, some stuff to, to do. You haven't experienced fantasy football until a player dies. Ouch. Paladin Demo, who died? Um, who would have, who would it have been that would have been on your team? I don't, I don't remember this. Um, Lewis. Okay. Let's, um, and then I could have told you that journalists were lazy since 2015. It used to be contained to pop culture. Yeah, it's all over the place now. It is. It's bad. And it's blatant too. Like, and and I don't even want. Like, it's not even politics. Like, it's everything. It's like as fast as you can you can type up an article, and it's all about being the first person to hit that topic or to come up with that great idea, and then everybody else like you know fumbling over it to be the next person to get to that thing and, and that. And so it's just this fight back and forth, and it's like just stop, do your job, and and report what's supposed to be. I mean, again, I'm gonna say this: like, I am a guy who is in my own basement. Um, in my little space that my wife lets me have, um, out of our whole house, this is my little, little place where, where I get, but I'm doing a better job of keeping things straight than you are. And I don't even get paid to do it. So yeah, it just, it's like, good night. Um, terrible. NCAA 14, baby. Yeah. NCAA 14. Good, good game. Um, yeah, you know, I, uh, I don't know what it was. I just... I've been been back into the 2K. Who do you think has to do that? Me? Huh? I don't know what you mean, man. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Um, uh, Ned Reynolds, my local semi-retired sports guy, did better, and it was about uh, Ta'amu joining the Chiefs. Oh, well, that's that's good. I'm glad that you, we got at least somebody reporting something news. My last season in the local Blood Bowl League, my zombie line <laughs> died. <laughs> Forgot who. That, okay, that makes sense now. I was like, because I've been doing fantasy football for years, like NFL fantasy football, and I was like, did, did I miss something? Like, what what like you <laughs> threw me for a loop there okay that that whoo uh, like that was like there for for a second i i thought that i like like i i missed something there hey we got seven guys all right okay you were already redacted it um yeah nca 14 is good game baby yeah definitely um yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I haven't been playing the college as much into the pro um, and that. And, um, yeah, just kind of, uh, like I said, getting back into 2K15. The thing about the 2K games is the 2K games are awesome, and I love the way that they play. I just wish I could do some RPO action and some, you know, get the quarterback into the game a little bit more and kind of play a little bit more of a modern game. If you guys know how to do that or can set that up, I've tried to look online. And and I haven't seen anything for that. That's the only thing that I don't like about the like the the two K. So the two K five game, um, it has a lot like a lot broader of a like a playbook that you have, which I like. So um, whereas the two K eight game is it's a lot smoother game, and I like I like all of the stats. So, uh, you know, I like seeing what a guy's actual stats are as opposed to with 2K8 where it's like he's a blue, you know, he's a, 
you know, this guy's a uh, a gold star, a silver star, or a bronze star, or he's just kind of you know an- another guy. I'm not a huge fan of that. I like to I like to get down and figure things out and 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 to do that. But the the 2K8 game, it, it's the the offenses are a lot more limited, and um, not that it's a bad game. Don't get me wrong. I, I I have a lot of fun playing it. I just like having a lot more options of things to do in in the 2K5. Um, you know, so if I get to take like a lot of the stuff from 2K5 and just import it into the 2K8, I, I, that would have been great. I, I wish that that they would have done that. Um, it, I think I think. 2K underestimated the fact that people loved their simulation and the way that they did it, that if they just would have given them 32-team football that they could have just gone through and customized to the gills and just gave them generic people, that it would have worked. Guys would have bought the game. They wouldn't have had to gone out and buy all of these licenses for all of these people you know, all of the likenesses of all of these players and all these legends, which I think is kind of cool. Um, or you could have just had the legends and just give us all the other stuff as well, uh, you know, and give us the franchise mode. And, and I know that some guys have, um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, um, King. Oh, come on guys. Is it, let, let me know down in the down in the comment section. It's King um, something, but he does that mod where you can you can do franchises and stuff, and I think that it's okay. It's okay, it's cool. But if they would have let us do full customization, I think that that game that game would have would have been done gangbusters. And and again, I think it was in a different time and in a different era when you know everything really like it was all about the licenses, and that's kind of how you you know that that's that's how you were legit back in in that you know in two thousand and seven and stuff. You think any Chinese players are going to be drafted or Japanese players or European players? Ah, probably not. But I don't know. I don't know them all that well. Um, who is it? Uh, um, who's who? If you looked at, he's a YouTuber, and I, th- I think his stuff's pretty cool. Um, he plays ball in France, and I started watching his videos. Um, and, and I subscribed to him like, like that, that dude's pretty, pretty fun to watch. Um, but yeah, he played football over in France. Um, and, and that, and, you know, I guess American football is picking up over overseas and stuff. And I mean, he, it, I mean, it obviously it wasn't anywhere near what, what we've got over here. I mean, you know, and he's not even really, you know, in playing in a lot of stadiums and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's, you know, not on par with some of our high schools. But it's cool. Um, what is it? <sighs> Something like athlete. I don't know. Let me let me look it up here with that. So give me a second, guys. Um, and we'll uh, yeah, hold on. See if I'm screwing things up at all with this. Um, let's see here. So. See if I can come up with his name because he's a fun guy to watch and he does a lot of like lets you kind of like the ins and outs of football. Um, let's see if I've got him in my in my uh, descriptions here because I, I do want to I do want to give the dude a shout out. Oh, um, let's see here. Um, adventure athlete. Yeah. He's like a pretty sweet dude. Um, I, I definitely lo- like, like watching his videos. I think he does a really good job. Um, and he's a guy that played overseas. You know, I don't know though. I don't know any players overseas and, and uh, I think it would be really hard, um, you know, to bring some of those guys over there. I haven't watched really anything. Like I said, he's the only guy that really played any football that, that I watched. So, um, let's see well, we got nine guys. All right. I'm glad to have you guys here. Keep leaving in the comments. Let's see here. Um, Midas uh, 13, Mutant Football League Dynasty is a fun football game to play. Even has spoofs on actual NFL teams, and the color commentary is um, the voice of NBA Jam. That is sweet. Um, I miss NBA Jam. Like, when I got the Sega, I think that that was, like, my first game that I got, and I loved it. Um, it was it was, it, it was fantastic. Is it the shoes? You know, um yeah, that was it was it was awesome. Um, 
Yeah, I loved uh, NBA Jam. Uh, the Charlotte Hornets were my team. Larry Johnson and Alonzo Mourning. Um, comment section, let me know if you were an NBA Jam guy and who your team was. Yeah, his show got canceled. Um, like that series, but I don't know if he if he knew any. Um, what series are... Sorry, Lewis, I'm probably all over the place. I, um, what series are you talking about? I'm going to have to, I guess, look into this blood bowl thing this um, that you guys are doing because like, I have absolutely no clue. Uh, has the same NFL spoofs. Some of you have to dig around to see who's who. So Mutant Football League, what what is that on? Um, and two, is it actual simulation? Like, is it like is it like legit football, or is it like just kind of kind of football, but not really any simulation? Because I'm not I'm not I I know I liked NBA Jam like back when I was a kid, but I'm more of a simulation guy. So so let me know because you guys kind of eh, kind of got me interested in it. <clears throat> so let me know and and two, Lewis, who got ca- like what show his show got canceled? Um, you'll have to let me know a little bit more about that. Let me know down in the comment section. Um, with that and also too, Lewis, did we give you some ideas of some things to do? NBA, okay, so Dalton Ferris, NBA Jam. I'd play as the Nuggets with Matumbo and Alice. Eh, that's not that's not bad. Um, let's see here. Let's see, like football France. Yeah, I. Th- Oh, okay. So yeah, the the league did can't cancel. Yeah, I watched his last video, and um, and pretty much yeah, the the stuff in France got got canceled. So he like he had to come like he had to come back. So um, that that's what you meant. Yeah, totally. I I I get what you're saying now. Um, okay, that makes makes total sense. So I apologize with that. Um. Yeah, guys, let me know what you guys are watching these days. Um, cause I, I I've got like all this. If you're if if I remember right, Mutant Football League isn't simulation. Blood Bowl is closer to simulation, but more customizable. Yeah, I don't know if um like I watched some of it and maybe I have to get a little bit more into it. And I don't know. I like I like the simulation, but I like being able to, you know, control the players and, and do the stuff and, and do that with it. Um, I don't know. And, and uh, the reason why I like the 2K games. And so, um, like, for instance, I set up like a team where I had like Rocket Ishmael, um, uh, Drew Pearson. I had um, Barry Sanders, excuse me, Warren Moon. Um, and then I had, I had other guys in there too. Uh, but I ran just kind of like an air raid, um, type of an offense the best I could. And really what I did was, is I just kind of had plays where I could pick and do different things and I could pick apart the defense based upon kind of what the defense was giving me and just kind of watching that. And I, and I like doing that in a simulation game. You know, so whether it be running the ball or passing the ball and, you know, so I'll I'll try to do things and maybe shift out of things and stuff like that. That's why I really would like to have if 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 you could figure out a way in the 2K games to give me an RPO, like I would be all over it. Uh, And two, the other thing that I really like to do, especially um, like NCAA 14, like I am notorious for this. I love taking a terrible team. And building them up. So, um, you know, taking one of the, like a Florida International um, or like Florida Atlantic and taking them and and just taking them as a team and building them up. And what I will do is literally run the ball and I will just run the clock out and and, you know, just and just go power and and do that pretty much and and just dink and dunk and figure out little ways of just taking advantage of the defense and and like for the first couple seasons before I get any like players you know end up 
end up like, you know, beating teams like 10 to 7, <laughs> you know, or and getting these stops on defense and then just having these long drawn out drives on offense. Uh, you know, that's kind of how how I played where I know there's a lot of other players that play differently than that. And you just can't do that these days with Madden because they, they figure out some way to like change it up on you. And, you know, it's not real like simulation, even though they say it is. Um Let's see. Or do you think Cousins, um, Bridgewater, and Tannehill are overrated? Um, let's see here. Cousins. I think Cousins is what he's going to be. I don't think he's any better or any worse than what, what he is. I think he's just going to be an average quarterback in the league. I think he's going to have some good games. Um, and I think that he's going to have some bad games. Uh, Bridgewater, I think Bridgewater could be a, could be a stud, but I think the thing with Bridgewater, I think that he's going to fit really nice in Matt Rule's, um, offense. I was super excited about them picking him up until they signed PJ Walker. Cause I'm like, uh, like now I'm like torn, right? Because I, I really wanted to see Bridgewater go and do well. I, I think he deserves it after what he did, um, when Drew Brees was out last season, just goes to show you how, like how good of a player player he can be. And um, and then I was like, oh, PJ Walker, but I, I don't I, like I want to see you play. And so <laughs> it was one of those things to where I was kind of like like torn. Dude. Hey, Roberto. Glad to have you here, man. I'm glad you can make it. Let's see here. Midas said it's on PS4, Xbox and Steam, not simulation. I don't know anything about Blood Bowl. I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah. Tons of guys are talking about Blood Bowl. You guys have to look into it, I guess. Um, Tannehill. I think Tannehill's finally in a system where where he excels, and um, you know I think that that was just a bad situation for him there in um, uh, in Miami. He was looked to be the uh, the savior there, and and he just he he's not that that type of guy. But I think to play what he did and the way that he did, I think he really kind of like came of age, and um, especially there later in, late in the season, um, you know, that was definitely Derek Derek Henry's team. Now, whether or not Derek Henry can continue on the pace that he is, that's the that's the question. But Tannehill's the perfect complement to um, to that running game, no doubt about it. Um, to where I think that he's legit. Do I think that he's like? a top five quarterback? No. Um, but I think that he's probably somewhere in that, mm, I don't know, 10 ish range on the high side, eight, um, in, in the league on the low side, 15, 14, something around there. I don't know. Hopefully that gives you something. Hey, Roberto. Thanks. Um, let's see here. You may lose some control because of the dice, but you can level up players with skills to make things easier or increase stats. Um, I play uh, Necromatic. If I kill opposing players, free zombies. That's interesting. Tyler, did you watch the past week's episode of Being the Elite here on YouTube? I have not watched this, this week's episode of Being the Elite. However, I did... Um, if. Uh, let me know down in the comment section if we get a couple guys that want me to. I'll give you my thoughts on this past week Dynamite. If you want that, if you guys want me to get into some wrestling, would you take Fitzpatrick or Cousins? Hmm. I don't know. Probably Cousins. Um, but maybe I should take Fitzpatrick, I don't know. Fitzpatrick's got that moxie and stuff, but it just never seems to really like get over things and that with it. And it just seems that when Cousins is on, his on is a lot better than Fitzpatrick's on. But when he's off, he's just, you know, I don't know. I guess Cousins. All right. Yeah, so let me know, guys, if you want me to go ahead and I'll do some wrestling stuff if, if you want. Let me know. Um... So I don't know. I'm, I might. Do, the question is, is though like with the with the mu mutant one, do I get to control players or is it like turn based? Because I I really don't want to do turn based. Um, you need to need to. That episode is very funny, especially Kenny Omega. Okay, yeah, it came out yesterday, and I did not watch it, and um. You know, now that we don't have any any like sports, I've been starting to watch the re wrestling again. So this is kind of like me getting back on the horse of watching wrestling. So I don't know. Um, 
Yeah, sure. So, yeah, if you want me to, um, any of you other guys, let me know down in the comment section. Any of you other guys follow wrestling, let me know. Um, I, if, if you are into wrestling, and if you haven't watched AEW, AEW reminds me, uh, it's a lot of what WCW was in, in WCW's heyday. Um, they, they really capture really what wrestling is, and they understand what wrestling is is to people and in how to book wrestling, how, you know, um, to do a storyline and, and, a, and a lot of those, you know, other things to where I think that it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, let's see here. What, what else we got? Um, do you can, okay. You do control players in mutant football league. Okay. Well, I will look into mutant football league. Um, Lewis play. I'm about to, buy right now on my xbox what is it called again um so i think we've got you've got mutant league football mutant football league and then blood bowl and i don't know what's blood bowl on so you guys can help uh um lewis out we can help lewis out hey we got 10 guys going on here that's pretty cool we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go for probably about um, to our eleven o'clock normal time. So we'll go about fifteen more, fifteen, sixteen more minutes here, guys. Let um, let's see, uh, yeah. Um, but unlike WCW, AEW is making it better. Yeah, I you know I totally totally agree with you. I think that AEW is is doing a fantastic job. I've really been enjoying myself um, watching it. I think that they got tons and tons of talent, and I know a lot of people now like it's funny. You've got these two camps. You got your diehard WWE fans, and then you've got your AEW guys, and it's like they butt heads. And like I'm not one that is like truly like one or the other. Um, but I can tell you that AEW is doing a much better job, and now I'm going to be an AEW fanboy to most of you um WWE guys out there, but they've just been doing a better job of just overall understanding what's going on and and the climate of things. And um, how the wrestling world is sitting right now, um, I'm and, and and really kind of where wrestling is and where wrestling is 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 going, and that and and I just don't think WWE really understands that right now, um, and and it's kind of sad because they they've got a lot of good talent and a lot of guys and and they got a lot of guys. Um, it is cheap, um, like how much cheap? I watch both. Um, yeah, I, again, I was watching both there for a while. The Hell in the Cell really, like, that, like, that was it for me. That was bad. It was really, really bad. Um, and so I was kind of done. I think I kind of tuned in a couple of weeks after that, but after that I was done. And then I was watching AEW and then XFL kind of happened. And so I just like my, all my focus went on um, into the XFL. And so I've been kind of trying to pick up storylines back again, starting to get, I mean, not that I totally lost, lost it with AEW, but you know, I think that it's, uh, it's really neat the way that they're doing things. Um, like right now, Moxley is, is it in wrestling um like uh, he, like everything that he's doing right now is just gold and and fans are eating it up and they should i mean uh he's just again an example of another guy that the the that the WWE had and didn't really understand what they had and and a lot of that goes back to creative and just this creative hold that the WWE has one they've got McMahon which i th i think that McMahon is is not really understanding again where wrestling is. I think he still thinks that it's like 2000 and it's not especially with a lot of these storylines. And the other thing is is like he turns these things over to these creative teams and they put together these storylines, but everything's is so scripted and 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 rehearsed in that that it's really hard um and then you add those storylines to it. And again, I know I'm being vague and I and I haven't really been paying attention and, and watching it, but you know, um, AEW I just think has been fantastic. I love the wrestling. I love love just how you know they're doing things and and that it's not like what you would expect from from you know the uh, from WWE. You know where you know if they're gonna have a title match, you know the title's not changing any hands if and, unless it's a smaller belt. 
And even the smaller belts nowadays don't like the Intercontinental Championship or the United States Championship. Those don't change hands, whereas anything could go on the AEW. And they've been able to build this brand up with only having one belt. And you know that that's really, that is the marquee. And that's kind of an old school way of thinking things, you know. And so you you build up these feuds and that. And a lot of it has to do with just the feud. And I'm loving that. And we got 11 guys on here. Mox is number one. Mox is it. Um, I used to watch WWE. That's why I tried XFL. There are a lot of people that, that are like that. Question is, Henry, were you a football fan? And listen, Henry, I'm glad to have you here. I mean, um, and uh, first time, you know, first time I've seen you here. So I, I don't know if you've been watching my videos, but thanks. Thanks for being here. My question to you is, are you a football fan or were you a wrestling fan that tried XFL and what your thoughts were about XFL? Um, Paladin uh, Demo Blood Bowl 2. It's the second iteration. OK. So there you go, um, Lewis. All right. Uh, let's see. What are the. Get the legendary edition. You'll get all teams, stadiums, and add-ons. Okay. Oh, forget about the the secret weapons. Okay. It's turn-based. Never mind. I'm not buying it. Okay. Yeah, the Blood Bowl is turn-based. The I think they said the mutant football is not. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Let me let me know down there. Um. But. Yeah, I you know AEW is doing things in such a way that they're they're building these feuds and they've been doing them and they're organic, and they've done just enough to put stories together, but are allowing guys enough to be who they are that it it really it really does a good job and they understand what pops with the fans and what doesn't, and WWE doesn't they, like I mean it's terrible when. You've got a guy like Seth Rollins who's supposed to be the big baby face and people and he's going on. He's doing this big monologue and this big thing to really like, you know, get with the fans and touch in with the fans and do all this. And what happens is, is they end up booing him and they're like. Like they're like muting it, so you really can't see it and hear it on TV. But people you you can kind of hear it. Through, through all of the mics. And then the other thing is, is that like, um, you know, when, when, you, when you have the social media, people are talking about on social media that they're like, yeah, well, yeah, they were people there were booing him um, and that, and you didn't see that on TV. And, you know, people are posting that stuff on social media. And again, it kind of goes back to the, the NFL thing. Like you can't hide things from people anymore. Um, and, and you just kind of got to go with the flow and AEW knows that they knows what they know what's popping. I, I like, I like how they're doing things, um, you know, with it. I, you know, I think it, it it's interesting for, for me, they're getting a little too large for one show. I think they really need to expand to another show and really add a, a mid card belt. Um, I think that they need to do that. I think that that would really be really nice and, and serve them really well. I think that they've got a lot of guys that that are in that that mid card area that could really do some stuff with that and that are really fun. But yeah, I mean the storylines are fun. If you haven't checked them out, I think it's great. Um, you know they've got this inner circle with Chris Jericho and and all the guys there. And um, I mean when you when you got a guy like Chris Jericho who takes a mic, there's just no comparison between him. And then when you get a guy, a guy like Seth Rollins, or I mean Roman Reigns doesn't doesn't really talk um, a whole lot, and they don't have him talk, but there is a difference there, and you can tell the difference is is Chris Jericho one, he's he's one of the greatest on the mic, so we'll give him that, but you just don't have guys like that that can do that in the W, or they can, they're just not allowed to. I mean, obviously we've seen that with Moxley. You know, Moxley is just, um, you know, he's just exploded since he's left. And we'll see what happens. Um, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but listen, it's been a week. So, um, what is it, Luke Harper or now it's Brody Lee. Um, I thought that that was really cool because I thought it was going to be Matt Hardy was going to be the, um, what is it, the the Ascended one. Again, I'm just getting back into it for the Dark Order. I think the whole Dark Order thing's kind of cool. And I think what they've been doing with SCU, because you kind of thought that maybe, you know, um, Christopher, um, uh, you know, Christopher, what is it, 
yeah, it's Christopher Daniels, right? The the fallen angel, um, and um, you know how how they were, you know, with him getting older and losing a step that might he might turn to, you know, be part of the dark order, and then you know SCU's really kind of like rallied around. So you've got this SCU thing, and then the dark order thing, and I thought that that was pretty cool. Um, Roberto, I might go back to watching the NFL if it comes back this fall, but next year I will be back to the XFL. Yeah, man. I mean, the XFL is, it's awesome. It's uh, for me, it's, it's where it's at. Let's see here. Uh, Paladin said, yes, it's turn based. Okay. So, but better, better feel. Imagine being on the XFL field with the headset on. Okay. Uh, it's not too bad. Um, Roberto, me too. Yep. The reason the fans turned on Seth Rollins is because Vince put his real life relationships with Becky Lynch on TV and that pissed off the fans because Becky is our girl. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, you know, I don't know like that. Like part of it was is that when I started getting like I started hearing the buzz with the AEW and that's what started getting me back into before XFL really took off. And I started looking into it and that and and, you know, I kind of watched the one pay-per-view and I was like, yeah, these guys know what they're doing. They're legit. I like the Young Bucks. They're fun. I mean, they got a lot of great guys with a lot of great talent. The Young Bucks, you know, are great, talented guys. Um Let's see here. Lucha Brothers, look, those guys can put on a show. Um, and they both, man, they, they put on a show in that ladder match. That was f- fantastic. Um, and then, uh, let's see here. You got Best Friends, I think, are, are good good mid-card guy. Like Jurassic, um, Jurassic Express, those guys get pops. Um, and they, they do a great job. Uh, and um, let's see here. Uh, you um you know, you got Pac. Uh, I think Pac is uh, um, like, like it's like that guy's legit. Um, a, a really good in ring ring guy. When he and um, Kenny Omega fought, like those two guys, those are those are two really legit wrestlers who are at the when they fought those you know those matches. They're at the peak, really of of you know their their wrestling and those guys are. They really put a lot out there. I mean, uh, th- that was, those were that was just fantastic wrestling to watch. And I don't care what Jim Cornette says. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you can kind of tell from that comment what my thoughts are on Jim Cornette. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not a fan of his. AEW needs to release their pay per views on DVD and Blu-ray. Yeah, I don't I I don't know. I don't really pay attention to a lot of a lot of that that type of stuff. Let's see here. The Dolphins are turning out to look like the Seahawks but without a quarterback yeah I don't know they might pick one up um here there's a there's a lot of quarterbacks on and a lot of good options on the market um we'll see what happens uh with that Moxley is my favorite in AEW yeah Moxley's like everybody's favorite right now like I love his energy I love the way that he is I, I love his um you know his ability with things um you know, I think uh, M- MJF's a fun guy to, like, hate. Like, there's a difference, okay? So just because a guy can get booze doesn't mean that he's, like, a heel that we want. Like, Baron Corbin is is a, is a good example of this. He's a guy that we just don't like. I don't want to see him on TV. I don't want to see him at all. He 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 has does nothing for me with that. Whereas with MJF, he's a guy you love to hate. He's funny, um, you know. He, he you, you love having guys like that. I mean, he reminds me a lot of a. Uh, he, he's got he's got kind of a million dollar man mixed with a uh, like like a Ric Flair feel, and uh, granted, he's a younger guy to where he's building himself up. And but but for as young as what he is, what he is, and what he's doing, like he's a guy you love to hate, right? Whereas with Baron Corbin, like you just want him gone. Like, like I'm booing because I want him gone and it's, I'm not booing because I want to boo this guy. And there's a difference there. And WWE doesn't get that right now. Um, and, and that's, that's tough for me right now. MJF boo. See, yeah, it's fun to boo him. Do we have any girls on this channel or any, uh, girl subscribers to this channel? Lewis, I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, Queen Corbin. Yeah. Um, I know we do have one Jim who. Um, oh, Jim Cornette, uh, the, like the old school guy, he has a, like a podcast show that he, 
like he was back in like he was big time back in back in the 80s and um and then he got into WWE creative and kind of the 90s and early two, 2000s and then kind of uh I don't know. He's he's a really arrogant guy. He was there with Major League Wrestling until he like ran his mouth and got himself in trouble on live TV and then got himself booted. Uh but yeah, um but that's that's Jim Cornette. Uh you know, I don't know. If you paid attention to older wrestling and you see a picture of him, you probably know who I was talking about. Um cuz he was a uh, he was kind of a oh um, I can't think of the name right now, and this is this is terrible. But like, uh, he was like the trainer or the, um, you know, kind of uh, the hype man for a lot of teams and stuff. Um, you know, he was with I think he was with the Rock and Roll Express at one time too. Did the Lions sign anybody this free agency? Because I cannot tell. I want a new quarterback. Do not like Stafford. I unfortunately I think you're stuck with Stafford. Oh, I know who he is. That that comment was a joke. Oh, yeah, I thought you did. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of Jim Cornette. You might like him. Um, you know, for all you guys, I yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, all right. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm gonna take uh, three more, um, three more questions. And um, we'll go ahead and we'll call it for a night. I appreciate everyone coming out and um, being out here tonight. I'll definitely be putting out more content and more stuff. You guys will be seeing some more stuff from me. So don't worry about that. I just appreciate every one of you guys who's been on tonight and all you guys have been sticking around with the channel. And, and that's really, really been cool. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see here. So, yeah, um, I appreciate everyone being out. But, yeah, if anybody else has got any other questions or anything they want to say, I'll, I'll stay on here for, I don't know, I'll give you guys here, in, you know, another, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, something like that, if you got something you want. Uh, I want my shout-out. Remember to give me my shout-out. Lewis, Reese, check out this guy. I don't, unfortunately, I'm going live right now to where I can't put anything up on the screen. Um, but, yeah, check out. Check out Lewis. Um, like he's a sweet dude, um, and he's been here in the comments. He's been around for a, for a long time here. I'll, I'll hit you up in a video. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, baseball. Um, I think you're Roberto. You mean baseball or football? Football. I like baseball. Um, I love playing baseball in um, in high school and that. But I, I football's football's my sport. Um, but yeah, uh, but Lewis, yeah, man. Um, you know, I'll I'll get you I'll I'll get you on a, on another video. Don't worry about that, man. Um, I'll get you highlighted on that right now. Well, let's let's see what what I can um, see if I can I can pull you up. I don't know. I'll stay on here for a sec. No, I don't want to do that. Eh, what the heck? Let's try this. Let's see what we get going on here. Maybe I can do this. I don't know. So, uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Anybody else got some questions? There are ways you can put stuff on screen depending on the stream software. Yeah, I can. I got to go ahead and pull it up. Uh, Lamar Jackson or uh, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, Mahomes, just because I think that Mahomes um, will be able to. Yes, Beer Snake. God, 
missed the beer snake, and we only got it for one week. Oh, it was so frustrating. Um, but, yeah, Mahomes, I think, uh, just because Mahomes, I mean, we've seen his ability to come back in games, and if he has, you know, bad games and stuff like that, he's, he's been able to do well. Give me a second here, guys. I'm going to go ahead and um, – Uh, I'm going to try to pull some stuff up. So give me a sec. Yeah, leave me in the comment section. I'm like I said, Lewis, I'm going to get you here. I'm going to we're going to have some fun with this stuff here. Bring up my videos. Um. So, yeah, while I'm kind of working on some of that stuff, what else we got? Yeah, football. Roberto, I hear you. Uh, see here see I'll I'll get you here I'm just not as fluent with this stuff and I listen I just learned a couple weeks ago how to do um, to do uh, the whole um, you know live streaming thing so give me a second Let's see if I can So I apologize, guys. I know that this is not really, like, good stuff to watch. Houston Roughnecks at Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Who wins? Dallas Cowboys. Come on, man. Can you see my... I, oh, you can't see it, and I've got it off screen right now. I apologize. Okay. So let's go back here. All right, we're going to get this. I'm going to get you, Lewis, for this night through. This is taking me a little bit of time, so I apologize, guys. While I continue to work. Um, let's see here. What else you guys? What else we got going on here? Uh, let's see here. Careful with the emojis. YouTube is full Skynet. Um, I know I was testing you. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, good. I'm keeping this this way. All right. Here. All right. Let's do this. And what else we got going on here? Let's see here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dude, you're good, man. Don't worry about it. We'll get you. I know I was testing you. <laughs> All right. Let's 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 get this in here. Trust me. I'm going to get you here. And boom, there you go, Lewis. There you go, man. All right. Whoo, I got it. And and two, let's see here. I think you can see it right up there. That's my Cowboys helmet. All right, so, Lewis, you got your shout-out, man. Hopefully you enjoyed it um, and that with it. So with that, guys... Uh, 
Hopefully you enjoyed the stream for tonight. And, um, yeah, more content to follow. Don't worry about it. I'll be bringing more and more videos out. And and especially if you guys like the NFL stuff, too, I'll be hitting up some NFL um, free agency with that. So hopefully you like it. All right, guys, um, that's going to do it for me tonight. And uh, you guys all have a good, safe night. All righty.